Hi there. I'm Jack Fotheringham. I'm the current president of the University of Saskatchewan Space Design Team, or USST. USST is divided into two main groups. We have our executive, which is responsible for the administration of the team, and our two design groups, mechanical and electrical. For the executive, we have myself, the president, the VP engineering, the VP operations, secretary, and treasurer. While the URC is the USST's main project, we've also done a number of other things this year. For starters, in 2015 in September, we actually came in first place in the European Rover Challenge in Kielce, Poland. Additionally, we launched our annual high-altitude balloon launch, and that was also a great success as we actually got up to around 100,000 feet. The USST is also involved in our community in a number of ways. This year we took part in Cameco Spectrum, which is like our college's uh, high-tech science fair. We actually took home first place for the best overall display. In addition to that, we've done a number of outreach ventures with elementary and high school students, encouraging them to think about careers in high-tech. This year we also had the pleasure of hosting two Canadian Space Agency astronauts, David St. Jacques and Roberta Bondar. This was a big deal for us because it's the first time that we've actually hosted any astronauts, and it was very kind of the CSA to present us with the opportunity. The USST here at the University of Saskatchewan is a pretty small team, and so it does take us a little extra time to get our designs from conceptual to actual reality. This year we've made an entirely new design, focusing on making a lot of custom parts in-house and changing our design methods to make that possible. This is our third year designing for URC, and because of that, we've gained a lot of experience in identifying what kind of designs are going to be successful out in the field. A big focus for us this year has been durability, reliability, and repairability of the rover. As a general overview of the design, we have custom wheels that are specifically focused for the terrain that we'd expect at URC. At the same time, we have very large brushless motors and specialized suspension geometry to give us a lot more control and focus the power that our motors are able to deliver. On the electronic side, we have a custom battery as well as a really high-end communication system that will allow us to stream multiple HD videos at once. The video streams themselves are gyroscopically stabilized and 360 degree video. We're using Oculus Rifts in order to display them to the operator and this will give us unparalleled situational awareness to make split-second decisions for the competition. We've put a lot of effort into the design of our base station this year in order to maximize the amount of manpower we have on our small team. We're using a telescoping pneumatic tower in order to simplify the deployment of the antenna. Overall, I'm really happy with the progress we've made so far. Although we don't have a rolling rover just yet, in the next few weeks, I'm really confident we'll meet all our goals. Uh, my name is Seamus Woodward-George. I'm the mechanical lead for the USST. For this year, I was working on the carbon fiber suspension. Uh, this is one of our biggest changes to the rover this year. The entire suspension is constructed from carbon fiber. It allows us to create any geometry, uh, basically place the wheels anywhere we want them. The wheelbase is circular so that all wheels are providing the same amount of torque to the turning and we can do a, a zero radius turn. My name is uh, Liam Bindle. I'm the uh, electrical team lead for the USST this year. Uh, this year the main focus has been on uh, communications and the robotic arm. One thing that teams have struggled with quite a bit in the past has been communications. We are using an ODFM uh, transceiver, which we've had a lot of success with in the past year. Another way that we've tried to improve our radio communications is by reducing the number of radios um, that we have on the rover as well as at the base station uh, to hopefully reduce some interference that we get. The GPS is used for astronaut assistance and the train traversal. Uh, so this year we're using a Pixie RTK GPS. Um, the special part about this GPS is that um, it has an FPGA built into it, uh, which looks at the uh, phase difference in antenna signals, uh, and then uh, uses that data to sort of triangulate your position. Uh, the robotic arm is a really central part of the rover. Uh, we've designed a completely new uh, arm board, um, which is capable of handling uh, a lot more uh, position controls and position feedback um, and we're doing a lot more in hardware than we uh, have before. Um, and this means that uh, our processor can deal more uh, with uh, control than it has been in the past. Uh, the way we control the arm uh, is using inverse kinematics, uh, which is just a mathematical method of mapping three space to the actuator and motor uh, lengths and positions. For the most part, this year, uh, a lot of the 
um, motors use encoders rather than potentiometers, um, which means that there's a counter um, which gets a pulse every time the motor is turned a certain number of um, rotations. Uh, and this means that if we count the number of ticks, uh, we can get the position of the motor. The Rover computer system is based around a Raspberry Pi compute module, which gives us excellent control over the specific hardware we put in our design. We're also using CAN bus communications, allowing for high speed and really detailed communication between the different modules in the Rover. And our Rover software is written in Python, but using a lot of multi-threading and other tools in order to make it really fast in a real-time environment, and at the same time, allowing us to dynamically change the code while the Rover is deployed out in the field. The user interface component is taking advantage of our high-end communication system and presenting it to the operators as a web interface, allowing multiple people to control the rover at once. This is going to make it a lot easier for us to meet our goals during competition as we can solve problems in the field that may come up and at the same time distribute some of the tasks to different people to make it easier for us to make quick decisions and get results. For the terrain traversal task this year, one of our biggest improvements is the lowering of our center of gravity. Uh, this was done by reducing our battery uh, weight by about two kilograms. The suspension is half the weight and our motors are significantly heavier than last year and are as low as possible uh, in the, the rover design. So on the, on the terrain traversal uh, task, we're given the GPS coordinates of the gates, um, which means that uh, we can sort of navigate the course uh, not just with uh, cameras, but also with our GPS, um, which just saves us a lot of time. Our capstone design group that designed the wheels this year focused on making the, the wheel as light as possible within uh, our parameters for size. And one of those parameters was to increase the contact area by about five times the, from pre previous year's designs. They are a conformable design, so the outside tread uh, changes to match the landscape. This allows us to increase our surface contact area, thereby increasing traction, and will allow us to use our motor's uh, increased torque, 10 times as much as last year's torque. This should allow us to go up steep, soft hills more effectively than in past years, as well as uh, go over the rock garden. The motor is completely housed inside of the wheel this year. To protect it even further, it is housed inside a carbon fiber motor housing that we have custom made. The speed of the rover is increased by about uh, half a meter a second compared to last year's design. This is to facilitate covering larger distances to make sure that we complete the task within the time limit. Last year's rover could not complete the steep drop, so this year we have increased the length of the wheelbase so that we could successfully complete this and all other components of the terrain traversing task. For the science task, we focus on having a redundant design for collecting at least two samples using both the drill and the robotic arm. Uh, this year's drill design is, is a hollow design and what it does is takes a core sample so that the sample will be stratified when it returns to the, the base. And it does this by having a cutting head at the bottom uh, that uh, with a spiral around the outside of the body of the drill which will transmit the soil up to the surface, the, leaving the core sample inside of the drill bit uh, and that'll be retained by a core catcher. And when we pull this drill out of the surface, the core sample will be retained and then returned to base for further analysis. As well on the drill, we have temperature and moisture probes in order to get those required data points. With the arm, we'll be collecting a surface sample and analyzing it on board with an automated infrared spectroscopy system. Uh, using two different systems uh, increases our redundancies in case of any malfunctions uh, during the task so that we can successfully complete the task. For the astronaut assistance task, our cameras will help us with situational awareness so that we can identify and move towards targets quickly. We are using uh, what we've termed the dump truck uh, module. This allows us to uh, store tools on the rover in uh, separate bins and then when we reach the destination for those uh, items we can uh, open the box and let that item fall out uh, saving us time and uh, effort with the use of the arm. Uh, the arm is also uh, has increased range of motion this year to better facilitate picking up tools and depositing them in the dump truck. The GPS is used for astronaut assistance to mark the position of tools uh, as well as astronauts and drop-off zones. Um, last year a couple tools were positioned uh, at the same location um, and our GPS cut out which meant that we had to go back and look for it. For the equipment servicing task, 
We focused a lot on the oxygen uh, tanks that had to be attached and detached for this year. We've come up with what we believe are some novel ideas. To detach and attach the oxygen bottles, uh, we, we prototyped two different designs of end effectors. One uses a geared wrist mechanism so that the entire end effector rotates around the, the DIN collar. The other design utilizes uh, four different wheels and clamps onto the collar and then uh, through belts turns all of the wheels at the same time, uh, thereby removing it as well as holding it uh, so that you do not uh, drop the collar and regulator. We'll be using our 360 degree camera to approach the task from any angle. This will really help us with attaching and detaching as well as utilizing the cart as well as approaching the different parts of the control panel and oxygen regulator. Uh, one thing that's new this year is we've added another degree of freedom to the arm. Uh, this means that uh, we'll be able to uh, position the end effector to be perfectly perpendicular to whatever surface we're working on, regardless of the rover's positioning. Using specialized gripper designs as well as inverse kinematics, we can improve the rover's ability to manipulate the different parts that we expect during the task, as well as improve the operator's efficiency while utilizing the arm. The arm also has continuously rotating base station and a number of other joints in order to simplify our operation and remove the chance that any sort of mistakes would stop our challenge. Thank you for watching our presentation task. If there's any questions, feel free to email any of us on the team and we'll be happy to answer them.